So to this point, we've acquired familiarity with single item auctions when there's just one item for sale. Uh, we looked at one auction format in quite some detail, the second price auction or the Vickery auction, and in particular, it's remarkable truthfulness property that bidding truthfully is a dominant strategy. In passing, we also mentioned a couple other single item auction formats. We talked about the ascending auctions or English auctions, uh, and then also we mentioned in passing first price auctions. What I want to do now is I want to look at item auctions that are beyond just single item auctions. And the reason I want to do that um, is because that's really the types of auctions that you see being used uh, in online advertising. Specifically, I want to talk about sponsored search auctions, uh, which you also sometimes hear called keyword auctions or position auctions. It would be pretty much impossible for me to overstate the importance of these sponsored search auctions uh, to the internet economy and to Google uh, in particular. Uh, for example, in 2006, um, you know, relatively early in Google's existence, but still they're a big company by 2006. At that time, 96% of their revenue was generated from sponsored search auctions, which is kind of incredible. You know, now in 2020, you know, it's a little more diverse where the revenue comes from, but still sponsored search auctions generate a huge amount of it. So what is it? What is a sponsored search auction? Well, let's just, you know, remember what it looks like when you type a, a query into a search engine. Like say you do a search for a keyword like camera. Well, in response, the search engine is going to give you a bunch of links, which you can click on. And um, something you've probably noticed, although you, you do sort of have to be paying attention to notice this, is there's actually two different types of links, what are called organic links. And so those are pages that have de been deemed relevant to your query by the search engine's internal ranking algorithm. Uh, so in Google's case, that would be the page rank algorithm. So the organic results are, are just things the search engine thinks are relevant to the query that you answered. Um, but then there's also sponsored links. Okay? Often the sponsored links tend to be more on the right-hand side uh, and or at the top. When assembling the search results page, the search engine has to decide you know, what links go on it. Obviously, there's not room for all that many links. So as we discussed, these uh, organic search results, they're computed by the internal ranking algorithm. But the sponsored links, they're actually computed using an auction. So there are different advertisers vying for the privilege to have their link shown to you on your uh, search results page. So if you think about it, what that means is literally every single time anyone anywhere in the world enters a search query into a search engine like Google, in real time, an auction is being executed to figure out which advertisers are shown the sponsored links. So that is a lot of auctions. And that is what I mean by a sponsored search auction. I mean these auctions that occur in real time to figure out which sponsored links uh, get shown on one of these results pages. So let's just, you know, let's just uh, make sure we're all on the same page. Let's just make sure we understand, you know, who's participating in this auction and what are the goods being sold in this auction. Okay, so first of all, who are the bidders? Well, they're, the, they're advertisers. They're people who want you to click on a link to take you to some landing page. So the way this works is that, you know, a search engine like, say, Google, I mean, there'll be some website you can go to to just register as an advertiser, you know, and say what kind of keywords you want to bid on. So like in a running example, you know, where camera was the keyword, you'd expect sort of a company like, they say, Nikon uh, to submit a bid, you know, on that keyword saying, you know, please show me uh, if you can whenever someone uh, searches for camera in the search engine. So those are the bidders in a sponsored search auction. They're advertisers who have explicitly expressed their interest in having their sponsored looks shown uh, on search queries with particular keywords. Now, what are, the, what are the goods being sold? Well, goods is basically real estate on one of these search results pages. So that corresponds to the orange links, orange links in this figure. So in this figure, I have four of them. So there's four different goods being sold, one for each of those slots, as they're called, uh, on the search results page. Now, one thing to immediately notice is we are no longer in the simplified world of single item auctions, right? So in a sponsored search auction like this one, more than one item is being sold. In the picture, there are four for the four different slots on the results page. Uh, and actually, to make things even more complicated, it's not like these four items are all identical to each other. They're not interchangeable, um, and bidders are going to prefer to have some of them more than others. Specifically, as your intuition might suggest, uh, the higher the link is, the better for the advertiser. The more likely it is to be seen uh, by the user of the search engine, the more likely that link is to be clicked on. So we have multiple items and they're of different qualities depending on their position on the page. 
So that means we need to go beyond single item auctions. That's what we need to do when we're designing a sponsored search auction. So this slot heterogeneity is going to be important for us. That's an important part of the problem. Uh, we're going to model it here in the simplest imaginable way. Uh, just by having a single scalar, one number associated with each of the slots, uh, indicating how good it is. In the sense, you know, indicating the probability, the likelihood with which someone who views the search results page will in fact click on that link. There is some sort of jargon for that in the industry, which is known as a click-through rate or a CTR. And again, that's just going to be the fraction of users who viewing that search results page would click on the link in that particular slot. And then each of the slots is going to have its own click-through rate. We'll be using the notation alpha sub j for the click-through rate of slot j, for the probability that slot j gets clicked on. So, you know, maybe say alpha 1, the top slot, the most prominent slot, it might have alpha sub 1 equal to 3%. The next best slot might have alpha sub 2 equal to 2%, uh, and so on. So that's going to be our model of slot heterogeneity. Different slots will have these different click-through rates, these different alpha sub j's. Now let me tell you more about the assumptions we're going to make on these CTRs and how we're going to interpret them. The first assumption we're going to make is actually a quite reasonable one uh, that's been backed up by uh, user studies, which is that higher slots are better. So as you go from the top slot down to lower slots, the click-through rates can only decrease, can only go down. The second assumption is really just to keep our discussion simple and to keep our notation to a minimum. Uh, for the purposes of this lecture, let's assume that the click-through rate of a slot is independent of the occupant, so independent of which ad you actually display in that slot. So this assumption is certainly not reasonable, right? And if you think about your own experience, you know, surely, you know, your propensity to click on some sponsored link on a search results page, it doesn't just depend on the position of the link on the page. It also depends, you know, the anchor text. So like, what are the words in the link? That matters as far as whether you're going to click on it or not. Uh, but it's very easy to extend this model and all the lessons that we're going to discuss uh, to accommodate also advertiser specific multipliers on the click-through rate. Uh, so I'll leave it for you to, if you're interested, look at the lecture notes um, that are on my webpage, timruffgarden.org, if you want to learn more. Um, for the purposes of, of, of this lecture, just to make my points as simply as possible, we're going to continue with this assumption that the click-through rate of a slot depends only on its position on the page and not on uh, the advertiser that gets displayed there. The third assumption is about how these click-through rate click-through rates factor into the bidder utility model. Remember, bidder utility was very simple in a single item auction. Either you have utility zero if you lose, or you have utility, your value minus uh, the price you pay if you win. So what's gonna be the analog for sponsored search? Well, the way this is usually modeled is we're going to think about each advertiser as having a valuation, a maximum willingness to pay per click. So we assume what's valuable to an advertiser is a click on a link. They care about an impression. An impression just means that your link gets shown to the user. We're going to assume that advertisers care about getting, having an impression of their ad uh, only in as much as that might eventually lead to a click. So in other words, suppose you value a click at a dollar. You'd be willing to pay a dollar per click. Uh, but imagine you know, that uh, when your ad is shown, it's only clicked on with, say, 20% probability. Well, then you're only going to be willing to pay 20 cents for an impression, right? Because 20% of the time, it'll give you something that's worth a dollar to you, and 80% of the time, it'll give you nothing. There will be no click, and you'll get no value from it. So that will be the assumption in sponsored search options. An advertiser's value is expressed in per-click terms. And then if we're just thinking about the outcome of this auction, which is awarding impressions, an advertiser's value of an impression is their value per click times the probability they're going to get a click given the slot that you put them in. Expressed in mathematics, that means a bidder eye's willingness to pay for an impression of its ad in slot J is going to be its per click value V sub I times its slots click through rate alpha sub J. So that is the willingness to pay of advertiser I in slot J, V sub I times alpha J. It's valuation per click times the probability of a click.
So at this point, after 20 years of sponsored search auctions, this way of thinking on a per-click basis that's totally ingrained in people who work in this area. Uh, but I want to emphasize that, you know, when these were first getting rolled out about 20 years ago, um, it wasn't obvious that this was the right way to do it, that to express everything in per-click terms. And it was actually a really good idea, this click-based advertising, for several reasons. Um, in fact, I mean, before sponsored search auctions, so like in the early days of the web, the mid-90s, even the late 90s, Pretty much all the advertising was just mimicking the way advertising had always been sold for, you know, like television ads and that kind of stuff, ignoring the special features of the Internet as a medium. Uh, in other words, you really just had people in smoky back rooms, like writing contracts for some fixed number of impressions, for some pricks, for some fixed price uh, over some duration. So that was the old school model uh, before sponsored search auctions came along. And then, you know, with these auctions, kind of everybody was happier, right? So like from the advertiser perspective, you're really happy that you only have to pay for a click. So if the search engine shows an impression of your link to someone who doesn't could care less, they're not wasting your money. You pay nothing for that. You only have to pay for the users that express some interest in your link via a click. So that was great for the advertisers. And then, of course, from the platform's perspective, they were super happy to not be like locked into these long term contracts uh, for impressions over long periods of time with unpredictable demand. So the platform now gets to have all ads competing with each other at all times, which is great for sort of keeping the revenue high, assuming you can assuming you have lots of users of your platform. That concludes the basic setup of sponsored search auctions, right? So it's, a, it's an auction where we're not selling just one thing. We're selling some number of K things, K slots like K being uh, four uh, here on the slide and the auction again it's responsible for figuring out which of the bidders which of the advertisers uh, get those k slots and then what should they pay for them so this is a more complicated problem than we had for a single item auction but you know ideally we'd like to have as cool a solution for this more general problem as we did in a single item case we'd like to have an analog of the victory option except for this more general sponsored search setting so that's what we'll get into on the on the next slide.